Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going to continue today with the Hannah Carlson color along that I'm hosting through my YouTube channel and in my Facebook group. We are currently doing a color along as a group in the book Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson. The theme of the color along is mystical and we are using a limited color palette. In previous videos, I believe this video is video number six, and in previous videos I have showed you the color palettes that were the choices for this color along, as well as some of the pages and some of Hannah's books that would be considered mystical or fall under the mystical theme. We chose two different, or voted on two different palettes that both also fell under the mystical theme and we have all started coloring in either the book of our choice or a page that I'm doing in Magical Dawn. Some of you decided to do the same page I'm doing and kind of follow along with some of my tutorials that will be on my channel. If you enjoy videos like this and you'd like to see more please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also turn on your bell notifications. Please also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy tutorials like this one because it will help YouTube to know what types of videos you like. It will recommend more videos like this to you. So we are going to go ahead and get started with this color along. Yesterday I colored a bottle and today we are going to color another bottle in the previous video which I will link for you either up in the cards or down in the description. We colored this bottle yesterday and I kind of wanted to make it look like it was a potion bottle with liquid in it and it had bu uh, bubbles just floating up kind of on one side as you can see over here. But there is a full tutorial on that so if you'd like to see that check the description box or go to the playlist for this color along. There is already a series of I think now there will be six videos after this one. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have three colors here that I'm going to be working with and they are part of the pencils that I picked for the limited palette. And I have pink, uh, deco pink, and salmon pink. So these are the three colors I have so far. I will probably end up adding to it to add more depth to what I'm trying to do. But for now, I'm gonna start with these three pencils and see where we go from there. So we are going to do this bottle here. I think I have y'all zoomed in enough so that you could see what I'm gonna be doing. But we are gonna do this bottle here and in my mind, I have a vision for it and as you can see the bottle is tipped over and it's got all these vapors kind of like flowing out of it. So my idea was to also make this one look like it has a potion in it and that you know the bottle was tipped over so I want to find a way to put the liquid into the bottle and make it look like it's got liquid that has dumped out of it. And then when I go do all the vapors and such, I want to be able to do those the same colors as whatever the liquid is that is inside of the bottle. And I still have not come up with an idea for how I am going to do like the next of the bottles and the areas that are kind of free. But I'm thinking once I put my background in and everything later that I may do some type of acrylic wash or I may find some type of way to make them look kind of translucent. But I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I don't know if I'm just gonna maybe color them in, some of the colors that already look like the potions, or I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but we will see. So continue watching these uh, tutorials and you'll see where I end up going with this page. But I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time and trying to also make it interesting and give you all tutorials that you will be able to learn something from or kind of improve your own coloring skill or maybe make your creative imagination kind of just flow and bring out some of your creativeness onto your coloring page. So let's go ahead and get started and I'm going to take my darkest color which is my rose. They're all still pretty fairly light colors because I don't want to bring anything into dark yet because I really don't know where I'm going with this yet but I have pink 
and as you can see my lead is pretty sharp like I showed you yesterday to be able to do this on the neck of the bottle I had to make sure that my darkest color was had a pretty sharp lead and I had to go back and I had to sharpen it a couple times because that's what you need to do to create a finer line and make sure that um, you've got that depth that you're looking for to make it look kind of 3D and the way that it looks on the page and I also had to make sure because of the bubbles when I was drawing in all the lining all the bubbles and such but if you want to see that video I'll have it up in the cards and also down in the description it was a really fun um, a really fun thing to create so let's go ahead and see what we come up with for this next one so I am going to imagine I want to be able to color quite a bit of the bottle so I'm not going to leave the open part where the liquid is flowing or the empty part of the bottle to where it's too much I just want to kind of and I don't want it to be perfect I want it to kind of just be I don't know, I think that'll be good. Or maybe not. Maybe I should come down a little bit lower. Let me grab my eraser. This is my Mono Zero eraser, and I absolutely love it. Anything that you see me using in my videos will always be linked in the description of my videos. Now, see, this pink is not going to come up but we're gonna, we'll be okay. That's a little better, I'll just make it. There we go. I think I like that a little bit better. I think I'm shaking the camera, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so we need to come out here like we did yesterday and we need to come in and kind of line the bottle on the outside darker right in here and in here where we would imagine the shadows being and we would have to come in with our next color to kind of um, pull this through but like right here we're gonna have more shadowing I will maybe come in again with a darker color but we want to make this bottle look as though it is laying behind the other bottle but I don't want where the inside is and the liquid where I would imagine the lightest parts to be I don't want to add too much of this color here yet because I don't know if this is going to be my darkest color or not. But right here, I am using very light pressure. So right here where I need to make this bottle look as though it's behind, I think I'm going to have to come back with a darker color because I don't think this is going to create enough depth for what I'm trying to do here yeah I'm gonna have to come back with a darker color okay so let's come in with a little bit of a lighter pink and kind of start pulling some of that out So the reason for me adding that salmon pink that I showed you earlier is because I want it to really look like a potion, kind of floating in the cup, kind of like I did yesterday with this where I added like a variation of color and I left a little bit of white. So I'm going to still leave a good amount of white while I do this and you'll see that I'm kind of coming in here with the same idea. as we worked on yesterday or in yesterday's video or I don't know when this video is going to go up it may have been a, may end up being a couple days but my previous video and I want to kind of come in here 
because all of this needs to look like it is behind and anytime you want anything to look as though it is laying behind something else you need to always add a darker color in there because that's what's going to create depth okay so I have my process red and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just going to line some of this because it really does need to look like there is some kind of depth in here to be able to create the look that I'm going for. Now this right here is going to be darker because you would imagine that there is a lot of shadows in here because it's so close behind. It's behind but it's very close with a very little amount of space to the other bottle. So I'm just going to add this process red very lightly and like you saw me do in my last video I just kind of turn the pencil when it starts to feel like it's getting dull and you could do that to avoid having to sharpen your pencil and then I'm going to come in here Oh, that looks much better. Look at that. And I'm going to come over here and kind of go over this and line it a little bit. Again, very with very light pressure. Okay, so we need to kind of get in here and make this much darker but we need to still keep that little bit of white in there because we don't want to shade too much and then I'm going to come back in here with my um, was it pink or rose and if y'all need pencil numbers this rose is PC 929 and I'm just coming in here and I'm pulling this out I know you all have seen me do this in my previous videos. These Prismacolors are wonderful because they just blend like a dream on this paper. They work so well in these Hannah Carlson books. They just glide across the paper like butter. Okay, I think I have spread this out quite a bit and I don't want to apply too much of that dark. So I'm going to come back in here with my lightest color and I'm going to kind of now see with this one there was with this one over here there was a whole lot to color. With this one there's really not. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm going to come in with my salmon pink and I'm going to add a kind of like I did over in this one where I kind of came in with a light green and I just kind of went around it and stuff and just kind of made like little squigglies but left white open I am going to do the same thing with this uh, salmon pink to add a difference in color variation so like I'm gonna come in through here and just kind of do that And I'm not adding too much at all but you could see how I left white kind of in here just to kind of make it look like it is a potion and I'm gonna burnish this out over here with this color and I may need to come in with some Posca pen or something to bring some of that back out over here in this area Okay, so to me I'm looking at this and I'm looking like it doesn't really have enough depth to me. I don't know, maybe I should add more of this color so that I could come in with a darker color, but this is the pink again. And 
and I'm kind of just doing the same thing that I did over here. And just adding this in certain places. There we go. Okay, so I have this mahogany red, and I didn't know if I was going to come in and do this, but I want to add a lot more depth to this to make it look more realistic. And so I am going to come in here, and I don't know if you could see that in camera, but my lid is extremely sharp. And I am just very carefully lining this. And I'm kind of wondering if I should come around and do my, I don't know, I have to look that up and see, but I think that looks good. Oh, that looks better and then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to do the same thing. You see how like when you start like or when I start I don't really know what look I'm going for or what I'm doing like I have an idea but I don't know what it's going to turn out like ever. until it's pretty much on the paper and I'm happy with it. And I need to come in with my darker color over here or my not darkest but I need to kind of spread this out here. And I've got to pull this darkest color out. And I think I'm going to come back in again with some more pressure on this mahogany red. And I'm using the hardest pressure now on this one. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm not using my hardest pressure here because I don't want too much of this down on the paper and I don't want the line too thick. It should just create a look like it's laying behind it. And if I wasn't using, I don't know, I, I'm thinking this page is going to be a lot more difficult just because of the limited palette that I'm working with. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way through because there would not really over here, all the liquid would be laying to this side is what I'm imagining. Don't ever be afraid with the Prismacolors or any other type of wax pencil to just continue with your layers because that's where the magic comes in and that's how they just, I don't know, that's how they work. Like if you're using oil pencils, you're working on just creating more and more layers. But when you're using wax-based pencils like the Prismacolors, it's a whole different way of using them, whereas you are making layers, but they also blend much differently. Because the other ones don't really blend, you're just more concentrating on applying layers. And that's what helps them to kind of blend together, but they're not actually black blending, they're just kind of layering on top of one another. And I guess they're doing a little bit of blending, but 
these just really truly blend together. Okay, so I just sat here and was thinking for a few minutes about how to make this look more 3D. And let's see how this works out. To kind of make it look like this one did. And I went online to try to find some ideas and came up with nothing. So I'm just going to have to try to be creative on my own. We are going to just come in with a little bit of white here to lighten up some of the areas where I wanted it to remain white so that it looks like a potion and to try to burnish some of this out. I wish I had an even darker color than this or than the, my darkest color here. I think that looks good. I think it looks a little bit more realistic. Let's go ahead and come in and um, make some bubbles like we did yesterday. Okay, so we're coming in and we're just kind of laying where our bubbles would be. wherever I would imagine them to be. So yeah, I was having some issues with my Posca pen and so I couldn't see where I was laying the paint. And I wish I had a smaller Posca pen than this one, but I don't think that I do. Now I could see them. You can see them where it's darker. After the Posca dries, if you saw my last video, it looks like some of it is still wet. But I think these over here are dry. So we just come in here and we kind of draw in the bubbles. And we kind of just do it right over the Posca. And the Posca will just really kind of guide you. See how the Posca is just guiding me as to where to uh, where to lay it. And it just goes right over it. The smaller ones are a little bit more difficult. You've got to make sure that you've got a um, really sharp lead. And that one didn't do too well. And 
Okay, and then this last one over here. Okay, so now you gotta come back in and you just have to kind of darken up like the top part because that's what makes them look like bubbles and more realistic. Yeah, I think the paper is coming up just a little bit. But sometimes that happens when you um, lay wet mediums down on certain papers, but it's okay. Nobody will be able to tell. Okay, so I'm just finishing these up. And I'm going to come back in and add my white in the bubbles. So here's our completed potion bottle with the liquid looking like it is just kind of flowing out of the bottle in the direction of where the vapors are escaping the bottle. So I hope you all really like this video and I hope that it was helpful. I hope that you are going to go ahead and follow the tutorial and create your own. I've seen some really beautiful pages that you guys have done using my last tutorial on this bottle and they look pretty much just like mine and you guys are doing such a fabulous job if you did this and you would like for everybody to see it please make sure that you check the description down below so that you could join my Facebook group because that's where everybody is posting their pictures so I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here and I am going to start the filming of the next video where I do the vapors coming up out of the cup. And so make sure that you are subscribed and you've got your bell notifications turned on so when I post that next video you will be able to see that one as well and you will be notified right away. So everything that you have seen used in this video is in the description below so just click down below the video and open that box and you'll find all the information that you may need or be looking for if you have any questions leave those questions in the comments for me I always come back check all my comments and try to respond to absolutely everybody so I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one happy coloring bye